New Jersey's Bruce Springsteen said he was born to run. Well, today we're in his home state and we're gonna meet some Jersey strong plants that are born to be run over. On plants are cool too. Animals are cuddly, animals are cute. You could put a kitten in a three-piece suit. But could an animal make its own food? Could an animal feed the whole world? Could an animal help you get a girl? Plants are cool too. Plants are cool too. Plants are cool too. Hey, it's a beautiful morning and we are on the road heading to Rutgers University in New Brunswick, New Jersey. In just a few minutes, we're gonna meet up with Dr. Lena Struva. She's a botanist and professor at Rutgers who's taken us to a place that she says is pretty special. She promises it's gonna be like no site we've ever seen before. Nice to see you. How are you? I'm great. How are you? I'm doing really well. You about ready to hop in the car and go to the field site? I'm sorry. We're not going anywhere because this is our field site. This right here. parking lot right here is where we're going today? Yes. This well, is where we're, what we're working on. The plants that live in these incredibly harsh environments, the asphalt jungle. I don't see a lot of plants around here, so what are we looking at? No, that's because this is at? the killing fields. Most plants that try to live here, they just die. But uh -huh. there's a few of them that survive and they evolve with it. And they are becoming specialized to live in this incredibly harsh, extreme environment. So we're looking at plants today that live right here in this harsh environment. Yes, and that have evolved and they are evolving right now in these harsh environments because humans are around and we're creating these artificial habitats for them and they thrive here. Sounds great. I'm in. Fantastic, because we collect data right now here in this parking lot. My graduate students are out here collecting data. Today? Yes. All right, so I can go find out what they're up to over there? Yes, and unfortunately I can't join you because I have to go back to the lab and analyze some data. But... Okay, but we'll catch up to you later on. Yes, I'll see you later. All right, great. Hey guys, good morning. How's it going? Good morning. Lena told me you're over here actually collecting data right here in the middle of this parking lot. We are. Yeah, what are you trying to figure out? So I'm interested in finding out about what plants grow in cities yeah. and how they grow and survive and reproduce. This is not exactly paradise for plants, is it? Definitely not. There are cars and people walking by and driving by all the time. Yeah. Uh, cars spill gasoline. People spray herbicides and pesticides everywhere. Uh -huh. We throw salt on parking lots. You have yeah. to be really well adapted and really strong to survive out here. Okay. Seems like you guys have been out here all morning collecting data. Are you willing to show me how you do that? Yeah, we can. We're actually going to go over to another site, uh -huh. another parking lot, because okay. we're done here. Sounds great. I got my car here, so why don't you guys ride with me? Sure. All right, let's go. Let's go. The plants that survive in parking lots are the sorts of species most folks might dismiss as weeds. But really, they should be celebrated as survivors and examples of extremophiles, organisms that have adapted to harsh environments like hot springs, deep sea ocean vents, and, well, the urban asphalt habitats where most plants die and the rest evolve. One of the habitats that we study in parking lots is the asphalt cracks. See, so the crack in this parking lot is something you're thinking of as a habitat. I've never really looked at it that way, but yet it kind of is the case, huh? Yeah. Imagine being a plant living here. Yeah. You have to survive being run over by cars, being really hot, being really cold, being in drought conditions, being flooded. This is kind of a place that I wouldn't even want to hang out very much in, and yet these plants are living in here. It's like this is a big filter mechanism, right? All the stuff out there, only a few things can make it through and to survive in this place. Right. Everything may be shooting their seeds around and everything may land in here. Yeah. But not everything is going to survive. Okay. So not every species can do this, but even within those species, only certain individuals can get here. So it's like selection for like the toughest, hardiest individuals and they're the ones who can do this. Definitely. So maybe a grass species can survive here but also only the toughest of that grass species will live uh -huh. and ultimately spread its seeds again. Definitely unusual circumstances for these plants, but also some unusual methods. I've been in the field with a lot of botanists and I don't know that I've ever seen anybody carry around a skateboard. <laughs> 
This is actually my seat, and it's also for mobility as I move along a crack. All right, so you're going to scoot around with this while you're actually collecting the data on this crack habitat. Uh -huh. I'd like to see that. Clearly, even the scientists need to adapt in order to investigate the novel ecosystems present in these asphalt cracks and to understand the plants that, through rapid natural selection, have embraced this difficult lifestyle during the short time frame since we began covering the world with asphalt, a period of only about 100 years. You might say that the 120 or so different parking lot weeds the team has so far identified have changed so quickly that they qualify as super evolutionary. It seems like this is one of the more common species that we're seeing in this parking lot. Yes, this is carpet weed. Uh -huh. This is one of the four species that is most successful and can tolerate being run over. There's only very few that can do this. Yeah. Malugo verticillata. Yeah. It is a prolific seed producer okay. and forms this oh, carpet-like prostrate mat. So this plant I'm holding in my hand is making flowers, it's producing seeds, it seems like it's kind of happy. This is a super evolutionary plant. Uh, it's really impressive. Yep. Well, I've taken up a lot of your guys' time. So I'm, I'm gonna go track down Lena, and uh, thanks for showing me this stuff. I bet you'll never look at a parking lot the same way again. I think you're right. See you guys later. Hey, Lena, good to see you again. I was just over there learning about the work you guys are doing in the parking lots, and it's fascinating stuff. Yes, and it's really important. These are the plants of the future. We need to know how plants are gonna react to all the things that are happening in the world right now. We have climate change, we have urbanization, more than half of the world's people live in cities right now, and then you have globalization, and all of these are leading to evolutionary processes that are changing the plants and are changing our world around us. So in some sense, this parking lot and the plants that grow there are providing us with a model of what it could be like in the future? Exactly, they are a model system where we can investigate how adaptable and how evolvable different species can be when you have really big evolutionary changes going on and really big climate changes and urbanization and globalization going on. So I shouldn't be the only person who's looking forward to the results that come out of your work, I'd say. I hope not. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing it with us thank today. You. This is a nice sneak peek and thank you for watching you. Plants Are Cool too. Oh, th sorry, didn't see you there. Ah, sorry about that. Sorry, sorry. Dude, sorry about that one. Uh, dude, that, I guess. Sorry. Funding for Plants Are Cool 2 was made possible in part by the Rutgers University School of Environmental and Biological Sciences and the Department of Ecology, Evolution, and Natural Resources, and by the President's Fund at Bucknell University and the Botanical Society of America.